Heavy rains has made Tomping Camp in Juba inhabitable. Almost all the latrines have collapsed, raising fears of a cholera outbreak or other waterborne diseases. The United Nations mission in South Sudan, UNMIS, with the support of UN police, is helping relocate the displaced people to a new site. Unfortunately, the situation has got to the point where we have one, a protection of civilians threat, and two, we have a public health hazard very much on the horizon. People are afraid to leave the camps due to the ongoing fighting. They feel more secure inside the camps and fear they might be imprisoned or killed by government troops during the relocation. Over 77,000 civilians are sheltering inside several UN compounds since the fighting began. According to the UN, 4.9 million people are in need of humanitarian aid. However, aid agencies have only been able to reach over 700,000 people so far. Carol Oyola, CCTV. And for more analysis on this, we're now joined live here in studio by Dr. Mustafa Ali, a peace and reconciliation expert. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. So there's obviously a famine looming in South Sudan. Let's not forget the heavy rains that have made living conditions in those displacement camps deplorable. But why is there a seeming apparent lack of urgency in resolving this conflict? Yeah, it, it seems to me that the international community is, uh, has grown quite lethargic with the many conflicts around Africa. And with the recent addition of South Sudan, it's, it's, it's very difficult for the international um, uh, organizations to actually intervene sufficiently with what is going on uh, uh, in, 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 in the many conflicts around Africa. Already out of the appeals, the, the, the total appeals uh, for humanitarian aid that has been uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, given, uh, only 24% has been met by the international community. And so it tells you that the international community, uh, particularly the United Nations and, and the Western powers who have traditionally been the ones that helps a lot, have other issues to deal with at this point in time. Mm. Let, let's talk about uh, the IGAD summit held last week in Addis Ababa and approved a quick deployment of what they're calling a protection and deterrent force in South Sudan um, to, to force both sides, of course, to reach a compromise. But is this the best way to go at restoring peace and stability there? No, it isn't. And this is, this is something that can be used as a last resort. I don't think they have exhausted, the IGAD has exhausted all... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, 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 ways to actually bring Riek Machar and, uh, and, and uh, Salva Kiir to actually agree on a, a comprehensive ceasefire. So what else then should IGAD be looking at? What are the strategies? Uh, Riek Machar particularly now needs to be um, 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 cornered in this. People are suffering, particularly women and children in South Sudan. And the more Riek Machar still says that he's going to fight, the more beastly he's going to appear in, 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 uh, in the eyes of international community, in the eyes of Africans, in the eyes of South and Sudanese. And he risks, he risks being tagged a warlord in the in the in the in the in the in, in the short term. And therefore it the interest of South Sudan, Riek Machar now must seize ground. He is not the legitimately elected uh, president in South Sudan. It is Salva Kiir. Yes, there are issues within SPLM, within SPLA itself in South Sudan, which must be addressed. Governance issues, corruption, et um, 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 ethnicity. These are issues that must be addressed. I don't think IGAD has uh, sufficiently addressed these issues and used the, 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 the carrot and stick uh, um, 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 uh, tactics to bring Riek Machar to the negotiating table. Mm, but what, is, what more then can the international community do to expedite a peace deal in South Sudan? Uh, one is that, of course, the humanitarian issues have got to be, they have to uh, work much harder and provide more resources to address these issues, that, uh, or rather the humanitarian uh, 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 a catastrophe that is in South Sudan. Secondly, we don't hear much from the Security Council, other than from IGAD and the African Union, trying to uh, um, 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 come down hard on both Salva Kiir and Riek Machar. Mm. They need to do more. They need to bring these two leaders, and they even need now to start threatening these two leaders uh, 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 about the humanitarian catastrophe that is unfolding before our eyes, before their eyes in southern Sudan. All right, Dr. Mustafa Ali, thanks very much for Thank this you. insight.